do it. You scrawled on this video to do it. It's your boy, Daddy Scobar Dreamer. So we back with another big body banger. You feel me? Listen, today we have something a little bit different. Apparently, this dude, this little boy, stopped going to school and the unthinkable happened. I'm not sure exactly what the unthinkable means. That's just what the title was, the thumbnail, all that. But apparently, I don't know. We finna see this together. I don't got much like talking to do before the video so honestly let's just hop right into this john do me a favor though if you really 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 love your mama smash the freaking like button that's all i really got let's go when this boy stopped going to school his teacher stepped in at the right moment a 24 year old woman is making headlines as she proves to the world that you're never too young or old to change lives she went above and beyond the caretaker role as a teacher when she noticed one of her students suffering the young boy, not even yet eight years old, had lived in over ten foster cares and was on the lookout for the Dang, next one. But that'd be so sad, bro. When kids be having to be in foster homes and going from house to house to house, like that's so freaking sad, bro. Like, cause there's so many kids that don't get adopted. That's 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 just a hard fact. There's so many kids that don't get adopted and they live like their whole life never having like a home. You know what I'm saying? Never having like parents, like real parents, real homes, real siblings. You know what I'm saying? Cause they keep going from house to house to house. That's so sad to me one that could take him in. So his teacher decided that she couldn't just abandon him to fend for himself. However, her journey was met with its own obstacles. Meet William, a boy who has known that life can be cruel from a tender age. At just four years old, he'd experienced enough trauma to be diagnosed with PTSD. He was living from one foster home to another, never getting too comfortable because he was never able to call him home. At school, he needed extra guidance and worked one-on-one -on -one with a behavioral specialist named Paige who could see his evident struggle. She spent three hours a day focusing on him and noted that he was very isolated because he didn't know coping skills. She told Good Morning America, Since I was one-on-one -on -one of him, a lot of our time was spent working on coping skills, behavioral skills, talking about how we behave in school, those types of things. At the time Paige Bramlett worked with William as his behavioral specialist, he was still just a kindergarten student with so much life yet to live, even though he had experienced more than any boy his age ever should. Paige learned of the many homes William had to live in in just four years. Paige told their story on TikTok, where it had been gaining viral attention for its heartwarming progression. The more Paige got to know William, the more she felt a calling to help him get through. But she had See this, I feel like this is gonna turn into a real heartwarming good story. And that's what I freaking love to see. Cause it's like, like I was telling y'all, I be feeling so bad for like the kids that their parents either like just like mysteriously died or like they the kid they didn't want the kids no more so they put them up for adoption or they couldn't afford them so they put them up for adoption or they wanted to have they wanted them to have a better life and all that so they put them up for adoption and then they're stuck in the system their whole life so this this is gonna be some good smiles we're gonna get some good smiles today i'm feeling it no idea how much of an impact she'd be making on his life Paige explained that both her and william's journeys completely changed when he stopped coming to school one day one day he didn't show up to school and he'd never missed a day I ran into his caseworker collecting his things in the hallway. She told me they were looking for a forever home for him to be placed in. So Paige, without hesitating, proceeding to introduce herself to the caseworker, then asked what she would have to do to be the forever home William. She gonna adopt him. She's gonna, that's lit. You know what I'm saying? Teachers, I was about to say teachers need to do this more often, but I don't think like all teachers sh should adopt kids because there'll be some bad teachers out there. I ain't gonna lie to you. But that's so lit that she stepped up. You know what I'm saying? She stepped up in that position instead of being like, dang, he not even coming to school no more. I guess I got an extra three hours a day not spending time with him. You know what I'm saying? But instead, she decided to step up. That's lit. ...been searching for. Paige was only in her early 20s when she made the decision to adopt her student. Her friends and family warned her and told her that was too young. Yo, They'd friends and families are losers. Don't listen to them. You're a good woman. And your friends and families need to learn from you. Everybody in the world need to freaking learn from you. ...advised her that no one would want to date her and that she should wait until she was married. They thought she was being insane. Yet Paige embraced the criticism and followed her calling. She knew that the good would balance out any risks and that at least she and the boy would always have each other. Paige's strong stance came from her understanding of how badly William needed a safe home and how crucial it was for someone to step up. It was easy for everyone to justify why they couldn't do it but all it takes to save him is for someone to at least try. Plus, Paige yes. didn't rush the process. She fostered him for a whole year before making it official. The day she finally adopted him, she shared, Now he is adopted, loved, and chosen. My son. 
We're learning together every day. Everybody, everybody spam clapping hand emojis down in the chat because this is freaking lit. This is beautiful. I love this. This is great. What Paige understood, especially thanks to her line of work, was the detrimental effect of trauma on a child's brain and the lifelong process of healing that they would require. She understood how the system worked and that it wasn't always in favor of the child. Advocating for all children in the foster system, she explains, they don't see the prolonging of cases that stay open for years, ignoring the voices of children. Thanks. They don't see the hundreds of messages and phone calls that are ignored by caseworkers or people who are in charge of the well-being of Thanks. children. They don't see the hurt, they don't hear the they cries hear and the screams, cries. they don't. Paige also understands that not everyone can foster children and that it takes a lot of effort to actually make it work. In one of her videos, she explains, Foster care is so hard but worth it. She describes many of the happy memories she and William can cherish together from skiing to dancing, which makes the reward so worth the work. Paige also had to adapt to being a mom to a seven-year-old while being so young herself. It's sometimes hard for me to say out loud like, oh my gosh, I'm a mom, but I'm so thankful for what I've been given and for how I've become a mom. You don't expect it to happen so early, but I know it's how I was chosen to be a mom. It wasn't easy for William to forget all his trauma and just move on. But where's William's parents at? They didn't, they didn't explain or say where William's parents is at. Somebody let me know. I need to find the TikTok. I need to find the TikTok because they said on TikTok they're going viral for, um, they're going viral for, what's it called? Teacher adopts student. Okay, I found a TikTok. I found a TikTok. I'm going to watch this after, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, that's just a beautiful story. But who, where are his parents at? Where's William's parents at? His real parents. Somebody, somebody find them for me. I gotta ask him a freaking question. It took time for him to believe that he was actually finally safe and that he wouldn't be made to leave again to another home. Because he'd been hurt many times, he was always scared that he would lose everything in a second. To manage his anxiety, Paige explains, When I would say goodbye, I would tell him that I would see him tomorrow. He struggled with sleeping in nightmares, so I would tell him sweet dreams. She and we worked a, on sk- She- This- This teacher- <laughs> 15 out of 10, 15 out of 10, raving reviews. Skills that would go beyond the classroom. It was hard to get his head wrapped around feeling secure that he won't have more changes. This is why William needed a permanent home so he could finally start healing and actually being a kid again. Paige and William have enjoyed creating new memories and traditions that they could carry on in their newfound family. We're enjoying creating our own traditions in our own little home this year. To show their support, their community even surprised them with a $10,000 Christmas gift. Oh, snap! Oh, snap! Hold on, maybe I need to foster a kid. You know what I'm saying? 10 bands for Christmas? Oh, we getting up the Lambo stove? We getting a little, a little Range Rover? We getting a little bit of the, the g wagon? You know what I'm saying? 10 bands per child? Well, do they pay foster parents? Do they, wait, do foster parents get paid? I don't, I don't, I would not foster a kid for the payment. I would do it out of the goodness of my heart. So I don't even need to Google that. Alexa, do foster parents get paid? For reference.com, foster parents are paid a nominal amount for taking care of foster children. Alexa, stop. That's all I need to know. Everyone can help these children, even if they can't foster or adopt themselves. Paige takes the time to share with her community all the ways they can make a difference, such as donating, getting involved, babysitting, advocating, preparing meals, and educating themselves on childhood trauma. If you like the video, please give it a thumb. Bro. W's in a freaking chat. Clap a hand emojis in the freaking chat down below. Honestly, man, I had I had a dream like two months ago, I want to say, where me and Destiny adopted three kids, right? And I was just so happy in the dream. And I woke up, I told her the dream, and it, she didn't see the, the happiness, but it was, it, she wasn't like against it number. She was like, adoption is it's just a big old, it's a whole thing. But I was just explaining, like, I just felt so happy adopting those kids. Because like I told y'all in the beginning of this video, it's so sad how the kids grow up without a forever home. Then they get, they get fostered um, out. I think they like, they age out of it at like 18 or something like that. And they got to live on their own without ever having like a real true home in the beginning parts of their life. Like that's hard on a person overall. But that's also hard on, um, that's also hard on, especially hard on children, actually. But, man, that's, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. This is real like heartwarming, real good vibes. I haven't really just like sat and smiled at a video in a while. 
This one made me smile. I thoroughly enjoyed watching this. This made my heart warm. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. Are any of y'all adopted? Let me know in the comments. If you adopted, man, <laughs> W's for you, man. Like, that that's lit. I'm glad, I'm glad you got adopted and all that. That's lit, you know what I'm saying? But that's the end of the video. If y'all enjoyed the video, smash the freaking like button. And if you like fire videos, good videos, interesting videos, I highly suggest you watch this video right here. But I'm um, yeah, that's for about it. I'm going to see y'all out.